it's the next level. Oh, God. The gravity bomb! Where is it? I'll never tell! <sighs> now what? Mark, you have to scare him. Make him think you'll actually drop him. I can hear you! I don't know, that, that seems mean. All right, here, I'll show you. Ah! Huh. There, see? Uh... Now he'll tell me everything. Okay, but you're gonna catch him, right? Yeah. In a second. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. And this week we're going to be covering Invincible Season 1, Episode 5. That actually hurt. <laughs> and this will be a spoil-filled episode of the podcast about Episode 5. So if you haven't watched it, I have to say this every time. <laughs> go back, watch the episode, then come back to the podcast, and then that way you're not spoiled on it. But with that, we're going to move right into our synopsis of the episode, which I pulled straight from Amazon. And it states, feeling good with his abilities, Mark risks a team up with a local villain to take down a crime lord while simultaneously juggling school and a new relationship, which is true. Yeah. The villain, yes. But in the very beginning, my feelings were very different towards the characters. I didn't think of him as a villain. <laughs> right. Well, I think they were so, talking about Machine Head, not Titan. No. No, I was thinking about Titan, actually. So uh, with that, we're going to move right into our initial thoughts, and we already kind of covered it, So some of it. So what was your thoughts, Jamie? I thought it was another great episode. I'm impressed at how much they can pack into 45 minutes and it not yeah. feel – and it doesn't feel like overwhelmed. It doesn't feel crammed. It's just really well put together. Yeah. My feeling the same way. Great episode. The writing is great in the show and the twists within the story is great for, I think, Mark's development as becoming a hero. And she's, he's learning as he goes through these scenes that we see, everything that happens within his life and everything from his parents to dealing with the Guardians, dealing with new villains or people that he encounters with abilities itself and his interactions. He's still young. He's still naive. He doesn't know certain things. And plus, he's still learning to develop or use his abilities at this point. So, yeah, it the, the show's looking good. It's very different. And like you said, last week with the comic, the, the way the comic was, it didn't draw you as a, a, a reader. Right. I and mean, yeah, you look at very much like I do, where we look at the artwork. And if the artwork doesn't really capture you. And I had this issue in the 90s when, like, Marvel did stuff like this in DC. A lot of people didn't like the idea of Dark Knight when that came out with uh, Frank Miller's Dark Knight. And they didn't like the look of it. But it was iconic with the character and the story within it that it became huge and popular. And I wound up loving it, and I got it when it came out. But there are other Marvel materials and DC materials where the artist was very, very different and wasn't what I was used to growing up with. So, and then when the anime stuff started happening with certain movies or stories within these comics adapted to anime, it, you know, it, it appeals to me because you get to actually see the whole story. That's the reason why I was really into this idea. Plus, honestly, I really didn't want to read. I don't know how many was uh, over 290 issues of Invincible uh, or something like yeah. that. It was ridiculous. But the the fact that they actually had that, you know, the comic was very long. And to buy all the trade paperbacks, you're, you're talking like at least a few hundred dollars because uh, they're pretty thick. <laughs> yeah. But they look cool up on your shelf when you get them all. You have the complete collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, yeah. Well, and then it depends on who you want to impress. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I was just thinking of my Walking Dead collection. I have the hardcover yeah. collection of all of them. And I just think that looks awesome on my I think I have shelf. the first eight of those. But those are the hardcovers, yeah. yeah. I kind of dispensed with the big, thick kind of trade ones that you used to get for like 60 to 80 bucks. Because they were too thick and they kind of yeah, get worn easily. Yeah, they're not comfortable to read. Yeah. 
Yeah, my niece read all of mine. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, with that, we'll move into our top five highlights of uh, Invincible Season 1, Episode 5. But oh, how you disappoint. Killing you is an act of mercy. Hey, asshole! And Jamie, why don't you start off us off with your number five? All right. Um, I was going with the uh, the young love in the episode. <laughs> like, I really like I like Mark and Amber, and then but they have a complicated relationship. You know, they've been they said they've been together for three months. So I guess three months have pretty much passed since the last episode. Mm -hmm. And understandably, Amber knows he like she's totally into him, and he's she knows he's into her, but. He's not following through on his promises. No. And that's not any fun. Especially being young and in a relationship, you're just starting to learn all these things. Plus, he's learning to use his powers, but he doesn't really know how to handle a relationship with a girl. And he's already an awkward mess. <laughs> <laughs> I know, he's so cute. <laughs> but, I, I mean, like, he's texting her while he's getting beaten up because it doesn't hurt. Like, you know, like that early relationship, like, everything's so much fun. and Yeah. Is really cute to watch, but then also, you know, they've already got their complications. Hmm. And it does complicate things later on as we see what we find yes. out about Amber and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, my number five will that be uh, Mark's decision to help Titan after finding out about his family or what he knows about his family at that point. Right. And Titan's story of his family seems to be so genuine that I think Anyone in Mark's shoes would do the same thing that were, you know, had that ability and were able to help out in a certain way. Well, anyone but Omni Man or I think Rex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we, we could see that at the very end, it was pretty much more manipulation at that point. And it's really scary because yeah. of what Mark's involvement and everything that's going on. You're number four. Um, I still love how this show handles civilians. Like when <laughs> Titan came running into the gang headquarters and the gang members are, you know, shooting back at him after a while, I would have just run, but they just kept attacking, which I thought was funny. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, like the next scene, the, for lack of a better term, rent a cops, you know, Titan's like, look, just shoot at the ceiling and we'll all get out of here alive. And they're like, you know what? That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, let, let us get out of here alive. <laughs> at least he's understanding, you know, they're, they're going to get hurt or die. Yeah. And he didn't. He was only there for what Machine Head's plan was, which was to burn down the buildings and well, do all that... this other thing, too. Because he, he let those people out, if you think about it in that one scene. Yeah. He gets them all outside and he hands them money. Yeah. And to, to take up for like a good four weeks or something, and at least it's concern of other people. And I don't think Titan really wanted to kill anybody. He just, it looked like he, you know, throughout this whole episode, he just, at the very end, obviously, when we find out, he was there look, looking to take over the business. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Them shooting up in the air. Yeah, I found that funny. It's like, oh, just shoot up awesome. in the air. Like, it's basically to show a struggle. Right. <laughs> and then even like when Mark kicks that rock and it like bounces off the person's house, I'm like, it's got to stink to be a normal person in a world with supers because <laughs> you keep being in peril for nothing <laughs> that you've done. <laughs> well, we talked about this actually in a group of us. We were talking about like with all the devastation that happens, Marvel had one and DC had one and they had a TV show about it. I'm forgetting what it was, but Tudyk played. Bruce Wayne's cousin, but it was in charge of this company that cleans up up after all the superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just it, the constant devastation that they had. I think in Marvel, it was called Damage Control, or maybe I'm getting them mixed. I'm not sure which, but they did the same thing. But it was more done in a comedic troupe to do that. Right. 
but at least they acknowledge it's like, yeah, these people just like destroy everything and then we have to rebuild. So think of the economy that gets really destroyed out regarding right? that. <laughs> uh, but it, it makes me laugh though. I, you know, you, you know, living in this world, you kind of think of it. It's like, hold on. In reality, they would leave so much disaster. There goes my car. Yeah. <laughs> Darn it. Kind of like that Stan Lee one where his sh car shrinks in Ant-Man and the Wasp. And he goes, oh, man, I should have stopped doing acid in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> but for the fact that, you know, you get all the, this devastation, too, and they have to rebuild. And, yeah. it, and it is hurt. And as we think of it in reality, it, it's hurtful on the economy and to these people, too, because some people will be homeless. Right. <laughs> and like the cars that get destroyed and. Yep. And people getting hurt. Yeah. 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 Insurance premiums have to be really high in that city. <laughs> oh, or if not, the government has to at least take over. And that's why they hold them responsible as superheroes. True. Hopefully the government's just handing over cash over. <laughs> <laughs> Like, here, here, this is what it costs to fix whatever you had. Just take it, go. <laughs> <laughs> so that was your number four? That was my number four. My number four will be Machine Head and his strange helmet. You know, I thought the character was very interesting. I'm like, well, you know he's an average guy, but he's got this weird machine head. What he wanted with that chip, I have no clue. Was it to enhance his brain power and the helmet does something? Who knows? Plus that auto-tune sound in his voice. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, I kept going back and forth on if I loved or hated the auto-tune. I'm not... I think I loved it. <laughs> it was just slight, which yeah. was good. You know, at least it wasn't like a typical song that you hear on the radio and you could tell it's like really enhanced. Like, you know, I'm not waiting for Cher coming out to do you want to believe in love. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, when he got that chip, after he got that chip, he had mentioned something about... Um, quantum probability that he could see quantum probabilities now so like it enhanced something on it enhanced him. a yeah. lot like he basically has you know esp or something like he can see everything going on all the time and all the possible options like that's that's some crazy power that is but then again these are crazy people and these are all villains and yes. we got superheroes that are pretty much have that human condition of having human issues like yeah. anger. Actually, we do see that in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which Steve and I will be covering today, too, because we're recording the same day. <laughs> <laughs> busy <laughs> day for you. <laughs> yeah, it's a busy day. But, yeah, in that, you do see that as well, which I love that they're doing in all these comics adapted to TV, film, anime. Uh, it, it's showing some sort of humanity in it. It's not just the fakeness of it. Marvel is always known for doing that within their writing as well in film and TV show. So I'm glad that other people are taking to that advantage. I think when Robert Kirkman created this, he wanted it to be more realistic within a personal representation of what would a real person be if they had yeah. this. So I thought, you know, that was pretty cool. Yeah. I also love the idea with uh, with Machine Head, too, just to end it on this note. His obsession with Italian maple office desks <laughs> that, that keep so getting funny. destroyed. So, obviously, he, he's got a keen eye, and he has a specific uh, taste for his uh, furniture. He knows what he likes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you're number three? I... Love that Debbie is continuing to investigate her husband. Mm. I think, you know, she's got this bug that she needs to know what's going on. And I completely would do the same thing if I were in her shoes. I love that she knows him so well because they've been together for so long that she has to the absolute second timed out how long it takes him to fly everywhere. Yeah, I, that's what I have in my notes regarding that. She sets a timer and sends him <laughs> on a laundry list of things to do, and she knew how long it would take with his flight pattern and how fast he could do it. And I get, I think it was like 20 minutes or something. Yeah. And then she had to go through the whole house looking through every cabinet, everything for the, the costume that they retrieved, which we saw in a flashback of her remembering him saying, yeah. I want my super suit. That's my property. And she was looking for it. She finally finds it at the last second before he shows above yeah. the cabinets. But she has to hide it after a certain <laughs> point. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I, thought, I thought that was so cool. Um, I'm really, really intrigued as to where this plot line is going. And then... Yeah, the, and it's ruining her herself. She's drinking more, if you think about it. Yeah. She's, you could see it's wearing her down mentally and physically. And the trust between her and her husband is lost. Because how do I trust this person? Because I'm starting, you know, she's starting to feel that my husband really did kill these people. And that's he through did. Cecil. <laughs> yeah, I know. But we all know that. Yeah. But the thing is, is that Cecil and the rest of them are really putting that in her brain. And now she's the inside informant. Yeah. And so. just a little thing on that, like that ne Necronomicon notebook from Damien. <laughs> I want one of those. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, they do sell them online. You do know that. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. Otherwise, I'd have one. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, they do sell them. A lot of people make them with the, uh, they'll do uh, like a form of it on clay and then they'll put it in prosthetic and they'll have, you'll have like a, rubber style wraparound yeah, for a book that you could go on so you could find one simply they're not expensive they're inexpensive they're fun beats I my little I yellow have... notebook that i'm using <laughs> <laughs> i think i have one that i got from a horror based monthly thing where you pay in like 30 or 40 dollars and you get a ton of crap yeah. and one of them was the a little mini notebook but it's printed over of to look like the Book of the Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I have like the uh, the limited edition DVD. So do I. I have those too. Where it's rubber. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right, the one of them's of... come falling apart though, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, uh, one of which I had the Women of the Walking Dead sign for me on the inside. <gasps> so cool. So all the women from the the movie actually signed it for me. So that was pretty cool. The Evil Dead. You mean not Walking Dead? Uh, Evil Dead. Sorry, not Walking <laughs> Dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't find Bruce. I haven't seen Bruce in years in any convention, so I was hoping to have him fill it out too, but that didn't happen. <laughs> and maybe he'll be bored after the pandemic and he'll start hitting up the conventions when they're back. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> so that was your number three, and I'll go into mine, which would be Omni-Man and his continued training of Mark with his abilities. I, I just love that <laughs> opening scene with the interrogation. <laughs> <laughs> they just let him go. He goes, when can I get him? When can I get him? <laughs> Did they ever get him? <laughs> and then, of course, you know, the hurtling of the meteor back out into space that Omni-Man makes him do. do, And he, he's like, well, that was a small one. He goes, what do you mean that was a small one? Well, the one I did last was like the I size love, of Texas. I love the space scenes. But I thought that yeah, was so funny. He's like, when are we get him? Uh... In a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you never saw it happen. <laughs> Hopefully he didn't splat on somebody. Uh, yeah, I'm still very curious if he got caught or not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, maybe that's a part of Omni-Man's sadistic side that we just are starting to see that's unraveling. Yeah. But now he's trying to teach it out to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I guess we'll find out because, you know, obviously, how long could they stretch this investigation out <laughs> and find out with the truth, you know? Right. Well, I mean. Yeah. It was only, what, five minutes of this episode, so. First season, I would say it could probably move I, into I think the they first. they get through the first season, probably. Season and a half. If they wrap it up by that point, that would be great. Um, I not looked into whether or not they were doing another season, but I'm hoping that they do. Oh, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. I hope they do, too. So you're number two? My number two is the what I'm calling Cell Swords versus the Guardians fight. Okay. <laughs> um, because there was blood and guts again, and I love blood and guts. Yeah, we all did. <laughs> that that scene, I agree. Yeah, that was intense. One thing that, like, there... It started out when the when the Guardian showed up and they said, hey, there's an anonymous call to Cecil. Like, when we first watching, I'm like, ooh, Cecil's up to no good. That's what's going on. But now I realize that it was probably Titan who called them to take care of everything. Hmm. I thought it was Amber because we do find ooh. out that Titan is her father. Right. But I don't know that she real that she honestly knows. About Mark and the Guardians. Mark, yeah. yeah I, same here. I wouldn't be surprised. But that really didn't – I it, it probably would come up later on once Mark encounters Titan again. Yeah. Saying, hey, I had them and come in because I sent in that phone call. But how would he have that phone call to Cecil? Oh, he has um, 
he obviously had isotope on his side, so he could have had isotope hmm. get a message over. Hmm, interesting. Or even called and said, hey, look, this is when this is going down. Come on over. Hmm, good call. Yeah, because I, I don't think, I still don't think he wanted to hurt everybody. Hmm. I think. I think he, did, but, he was just more into the power. Yeah, I think it was collateral damage, mm-hmm. and if it happened, it happened, but I think he wanted to. And he also, it was a backup to make sure he won, because if Invincible was on his side, the Guardians are going to back up Invincible, yes. and it's another means to an end, like it was an insurance. Yeah, yeah, it's an assurance of him getting what he needs, and then, you know, Mark coming out unscathed, but <laughs> in this case, <laughs> nope, that really hurt. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. <laughs> Battle Beast is rough yes yeah yeah i mean uh imagine if he were a good guy instead of a bad guy or just i'm curious about his backstory yeah he's from another planet too so i wonder why he would have to be if he looked like a lion (laughs) (laughs) well at the very end he's like i was told this planet would have worthy people or whatever and he's like but you don't i'm going home (laughs) yeah yeah very much so but, he was tapped for some reason from Machine Head. Yeah, Machine Head said he's got money, so he just bought all of these super hero cell swords and put them together to have his which own is a cool group. concept. Yeah, the, the, which is a cool concept because we've only had groups that were they were aliens. You know, yeah, they were just aliens trying to invade or something or Mars. But, yeah, and like we've got our guardians who are trying to fight for good, and then you've got some bad guys, mm. but. Just this group of random people who are just there to get paid is something I don't think I've seen in any superhero lore before. Yeah, they're like bounty hunters or something, just saying, hey, just yeah. pay me and I'll do it. But they were yeah, brought which... together like a Legion of Doom for at least Machine Head for a moment. Yeah, it was kind of cool. I, I would like to know more about some of the other ones. Like Battle Beast, I think, was the only name I got out of the whole group. Yeah, because the others kind of just came and went or just got <laughs> decimated to yeah. some degree. That lava guy was pretty uh, intense, too. Yeah. Yeah, it gave me the uh, feels of the Human Torch or something. But yeah. how he was able to manipulate and kind of, you know, go around people. And then watch, like, once the fight went down and, like, Black Samson and Invincible are down and out, and possibly really out. Um, yeah, we, we did lose Guardian. Black Samson. He died. Yeah. Darn that. that. That's part of my number two. It's like, oof. And the fact that Mahershala Ali, who is going to be the new Blade, he's the one that voiced Titan. And we got Michael Dorn, who is in Star Trek The Next Generation fame as Worf, doing the voice of Battle Beast. So it's cool that we're getting more voice actors that we're familiar with, too. Yeah. Even though Battle Beast was like a one-off, I think Titan's here to stay. Well, maybe. We'll see if he comes back. Like I said, he was the only one that we know the name of, so maybe he comes back. Plus the fact that, you know, we got Mahershal Ali also doing the same, something similar to what he was doing in the Punisher Netflix series. Because he was, not Punisher, um, Iron Fist, sorry. And <laughs> he was the evil guy in that show. So I thought that was pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. So, and, But in this case, he's not as ruthless, apparently. So... <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. We'll see what it ends up being. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, it was cool watching the ever you know the Guardians actually come together and fight as a unit. Yes. And, I mean, I'm going to miss Black Samson terribly, oh, and I hope, they, yeah, Kari I hope his memory will, keeps them together. Well, Kari Payton died in this show. Uh, we haven't seen him die in the other yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love Kari Payton. I'm going to miss. And he's still cyborg anyway, so. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> But we do get that that actually hurt. I think we got that from somebody within the episode, that line. And the fact that we, during that fight, at the very end, Cecil and the crew come in to take care of everybody. Obviously, Samson can't be taken care of. Beast Girl is down, beaten up. Yeah. And then we have Mark who's down, but they're trying to save him. They're doing everything that they need. But there was a reason for them to try to do that because we're actually seeing him bleed at this point. Yeah. So when we find that out at the very end, that I guess uh, the the blood doesn't die. Right. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. And they're trying to find a way to take Omni-Man down. I don't think it was more of Mark. I think it was more of them trying to take Omni-Man down. 
by right. researching that. I agree blood. with that. Yeah, that was my number two as well. So we kind of filled Good up both. Good number two. <laughs> <laughs> You're number one? Titan. Mm. Like the beginning when we think he's this anti-hero victim of fate, but he's still like this badass. Yeah. I mean, the episode starts with like his, for lack of a better term, intro music, mm -hmm. which was Make Way for the King, which I thought was a great song. Like it was just perfect. Him walking in and just kicking ass with that. And the song was a great backdrop for it. Yeah, it was. And, you know, he seems to have, like, sacrificed for his family. And he's being t we think he's being taken advantage of by Machine Head. And we're all like, oh, this poor guy. We got to help him out. <laughs> I mean, and then, like, when his daughter asked him if he's a good guy. Ooh. I was like, oh. Yeah. Because he can't say yes, which is terrible. That is terrible. And then, like, in the last second, you find out, oh, he had a whole plan to take over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was just playing the buffoon that was taking orders, and he had a, his own plan of himself that was he was keeping top secret. Yeah. And apparently Isotope agreed with him because jumped on board, too. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, my number one would be finding out that Titan was just on that mission alone, you know, take over Machine Head's organization. And, you know, and then we finally find out, you know, Amber is his oldest daughter. And then in the combination with that, with the, I already mentioned it, the Cecil experimenting on Mark's blood and finding out Viltrumite blood cannot die. So we're starting to see a, a more plans and more going into the actual story of what they're leading to within their investigation. How, And obviously we know they're looking to get rid of Omni-Man in the end. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I get it. Like, especially after what happened, you need to find, you know, I can see why they need to find a way to take care of that, you know, take care of him. But mm. So uh, that was pretty much it for top five, but we should move into some notes that we really didn't discuss. Is there anything in there that you didn't bring up that we really didn't discuss? Um, Eve's parents suck. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't get her pissed off, though. <laughs> yeah. This guy cheated on me. I don't care. He'll protect you. Stay with him. No. <laughs> no. Oh, hold on. Me getting abused all the time. That works out, Mom and yeah. Dad, right? Hold on. Seriously. I could do this. Hold on. I could take down this whole bus and building. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I would be afraid of. I were a parent of a soup, but the fact that the, yeah. they're, they're bringing her up, unless you're a soup yourself and you're raising your child to be one, at least you could show some humility or something to show them how to do this in this world. Yeah. And she just, well, at least she stormed off and flew away. <laughs> they're not good. I, I don't envy them at all, but yeah. they could handle that a whole lot better. <laughs> <laughs> The Mahler twins? Oh, the Mahler twins? Yeah. The Mahler yeah, yeah. Like, He keeps, like, duplicating himself. He keeps uh, cloning himself. And then Robot shows up at that last minute. And what did he say? I have it in my notes somewhere. But he, oh, yeah. Robot going to Mahler for help with the DNA and tissue replication growth. He stated that to Mahler that he would make it worth his while. And I'm like, hmm, what's going on here? <laughs> I was like, what is he going to hire Mahler for? So there's right. there's another underlying story there that we have. And Zachary Quinto does great as being a robot. He is so good as a robot. I, I love that character. And then I just had one more, which is the way we get to the opening credit is just like the comic, where it, you finish the word, you know, finish the sentence with the word invincible yes. and it comes up. And I thought that was like a really cool tie into the comic. They've been doing that with the previous episodes, too, but with this one, yeah. it was more pronounced. You could actually see it. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot to mention it last week, and so I was like, I'll mention it this week. It works. It works. <laughs> yeah. Last one up for me would be Robot's Feelings for Monster Girl. Yes. And I think this is going to come up sometime soon. It's going to come out. But it, I think it won't end properly or good for uh, Robot in the end because we already saw the discrimination between Monster Girl towards him. Right. Like, I feel so bad. Like, I already feel bad for his heartbreak. Yeah. He, it's like, do you really want to heartbreak a robot that's invincible like that? <laughs> <laughs> it might, you know, what is she, what's he going to do? Wind up killing Rex or having Moeller take down Rex at one point? I, yeah. Nah, I think I think he's got something bigger planned. Mm. Or maybe he's trying to help her because he's trying to replicate and duplicate the DNA. Maybe he's trying to figure Ooh. a way to help her, and that way win her affections. I don't know. I just 
like a oh, thought. That's an interesting thought. Yeah. But yeah, I, I already see a love triangle going on between Robot Rex and. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, duplicates always mixed in there with Rex. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was it for me with notes. Me too. So we'll move right into quotes. So I see you have a couple. We kind of talked about this one, but um, your lives worth minimum wage, or do you want to fire the guns in the air and we'll all walk away happy and alive? Hmm. Yeah, that was pretty. That was a good scene. And the way he brings yeah. it up, too, is very straightforward. It's like literally giving them, handing you, know, this is... Letting you go, all you have to do is do yeah. this. Do you want to die? Because you... you're going to die, but here's your chance to get out. <laughs> exactly. My first one would be Machine Head going, he looks at the chip going, not scratched? Not bad for a guy with gravel for fingers. <laughs> 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 Which is true, because it looks to me with Titan, it's only just like a rock shell that comes around him. The strength really is him. I don't think he yeah. gets his strength from his rock persona. No, I think the rock is just the impenetrable... Shield that he part. has, yeah. Yeah. Another tight one was when he spelled Invincible wrong. was like, hey, paint costs money. You got a long-ass name. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I feel the same out. way. And it shows that, yeah, he's still struggling. Even though he had that money to hand to these people, that was probably from Machine Head. And he's handing it to these people to help out. But you, know, you could tell because of the community health center his wife and his daughter walk out of. They're struggling yeah. too, just any as anybody. So, you know, it was his deep need of taking over the organization to be this power guy. Who knows if he's going to give back to the community? Maybe they're maybe he's like the kingpin of this the show that tries to do better for the community. I don't know. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. <laughs> Hopefully, we find out what happens. Hopefully, it's not the end of the story. <laughs> yeah. And then less when I would have would be Titan saying, this is bullshit. <laughs> and Invincible just says, hey, dude, this isn't fun for me either. <laughs> and that's while well, Invincible was like holding him like a little baby, like flying through the city <laughs> as he, Titan shows him what Machine Head is doing within the town. Yeah, that was really funny. Another cute that scene that I thought was till you saw Invincible with the elephant guy after Communita. <laughs> that was a good scene. <laughs> Because I was like, an elephant is attacking something? And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> it's their idea of a rhino, or their version of the rhino from Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> the very last one I had was um, Debbie saying, helping someone is never beneath you. Which is good advice. Good advice overall. Yeah, in general. And, has nothing yeah. to do with being a superhero or anything. It's just, just being a good person in general. Yeah. And I love how she attacks Omni-Man for that, too, because he's like, oh, like, basically, he's not teaching him the right thing. All right. So this week we got some feedback, but it's my co-host, Steve. <laughs> so, I I have a friend who sent me a text, too. Oh, no, you want to read her text? Officially. Yes, I'll read the text. Cool. Um, this is from my uh, friend, Chris. He sent me a text. He's like, holy shit, just finished the episode. God damn, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Almost didn't see the turn Titan set up in the end by playing Invincible. Also, I love that the title card gets more and more bloody with every episode. Ooh, another I, Kirkman that thing that goes on because in Walking Dead they yeah they kind of degrade the Walking Dead symbol. So in this, it gets bloodier. Awesome. Yeah, Good I didn't call. notice. I thought that was cool. Good catch. And then after seeing this episode, I feel like maybe Robot is trying to make an organic form for himself at this point. Mm. I can't wait to see how the wife and Nolan dynamic pans out as she figures out what's going on with the snooping as well. Yeah, I like that, Chris. That's, that's pretty cool for the fact that, you know, maybe. Yeah, he's got Yeah, How is he going to make thoughts. love to her being a robot? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> well, maybe he has the parts installed already. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's like a Vision Scarlet Witch thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, well, well... I thought those were some really good thoughts. They are good thoughts, yeah. yeah. Thanks, yeah. Chris, for sharing them. It's great that we got... Who's following along and, and is looking at that stuff. All right, well, right now what we're going to do is we're going to listen to Steve's feedback. Yay, Steve. Hey, Mark and Jamie, this is Steve, and this is for Invincible, Episode 5. Uh, that actually hurt, and man, seeing Mark beaten so badly... 
there was was really a surprise to me. But uh, uh, and also just love the guest uh, of Michael Dorn doing the being the beast guy. And, uh, you know, I wonder how he would have handled himself against Omni-Man if Omni-Man had uh, had responded and how that fight would have gone. That would have been interesting to see. But uh, yeah, so we get uh, some more heroes, maybe dead, maybe uh you know, definitely they're going to be hurting for a while. Um, poor Black Samson getting uh, getting his arm crushed. and uh, But I think for me, this mystery about the cloning and uh, the robot, you know, he brought the, the clone maker guy. Uh, I'm assuming that was, um, oh, the Flash guy. I can't remember his name now. Uh, uh, his, uh, Jason Manzoukas' blood, and maybe he's going to try to, to clone superheroes. I'm not sure. And, uh, but, uh, so yeah, really, really good. I, I can't wait to hear you talk about it. And I can't wait to hear the, the discussion of how this relates to the comics and, uh, if any theories you guys have, uh, going forward, uh, without spoiling it. So, all right. I'll talk to you later. Awesome. I feel like I'm officially part of the group now that I had a Steve, um, voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, yeah, it's pretty cool. That interesting thought he had about them. Yeah. Like robot trying to clone other people that they were dead. So that's interesting. Everybody's coming up with their own ideas. <laughs> <laughs> we're all going to be wrong. We're all going to be speculating just like, like Ben and I did for WandaVision. It's like, oh, we're all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> and that's okay. That's just exactly. kind of a good show. You don't want and, it to be too predictable. <laughs> yeah. And we could always run to the comic and get an idea, but me, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> But I like I like taking the. I'm still trying to read it, but I'm just so not. I know it. <laughs> it, it's certain adaptations you just want to watch as they are because that's what's now. Yeah, a lot of people don't want to go back now. Mind you, I didn't. I started a little bit, but I'm not going to go in and read the whole thing. Yeah, my feeling is I'm going to accept it for what it is. A lot of people do that with the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies that are out there because they've never read them. They just enjoy them as a whole as they are. Which is good. And you could do that. You could do that with anything. There's, I've known a lot of comic purists that hated uh, how they did the Dark Knight Returns and how that was portrayed in anime and stuff. So me, I read the comic, but I accepted, you know, the anime for what it was afterwards or even the killing joke. Yeah. That was out too. So there, there's certain, you know, a lot of people are different. They, they have their own thoughts. Yeah. No, I'm good with keeping them separate as long as they're both you know as long as they're both good i'm okay with yeah. okay this is this is the visual end of it and the movie one and this is the book one and they're different because they're different mediums so they need different things to work yeah yeah and every, it can't be exactly the same exactly you can't have the same exact thing to happen in a comic a lot of people have that issue because with venom venom 2 is coming out and the biggest thing that I get from a coworker of mine who's a huge Venom fan, and he's like, well, they have to make it like the comic. I'm like, well, in order to do that, they have to have secret wars. And then Spider-Man gets his costume, then he has it, and then it goes on to Eddie Brock. And they're doing adaptations based upon. Hopefully, all they would have to do is just have Tom Holland Spider-Man encounter, you know, Brock, and then, you know, Eddie Brock, and then just get the suit on him at one point and then it goes back to eddie at one point that's all that's needed yeah. honestly yeah but you know you can't appease everybody but uh, it's no. the character itself that they wanted to present out and everybody knows the love you can't have the the symbolism with the the spider on it all the time i don't think they're ever gonna really do that if they do it won't be until later on but we'll we'll find out uh sony and marvel have this agreement and well we'll I'll bring that up as far as certain news, because apparently Sony has signed a specific deal with Netflix now because everybody has their own streaming service. So if you look at that, Disney has already cornered it their own. Right. They have their old stuff, their Star Wars, their Marvel Cinematic Universe, their Muppets. They have everything. Pixar. So they don't. Yeah. And they don't have to send that to Netflix or Hulu. Well, Hulu is part of it, I think. They have a good yeah. Hulu with falls that. into the Disney umbrella, so they have their own. And then you got Paramount Plus. So they're doing their own movies. They're probably going to engage into that. So Sony has no market for themselves, but now they do have an arrangement. So 
I'm thinking maybe the Spider-Man movies or any more like Marvel style Sony product will be limited to that for X amount of time. And then with the negotiations, Marvel would be able to get some of those movies for a short amount of time, probably within their overall agreement. Yeah. But I just hope it doesn't strain the relationship with Marvel and Sony at this point because the characters interweaving within their movies, it's really good. Yeah. All right. So with that, we'll, we'll just move right into podcast recommendations. So what do you have? One of my favorite podcasts is this one called Science Versus, and they'll dive into different co- topics. It can be something like this week's one was um, eugenics, hmm. which is a pretty heavy topic. Yes. But they'll also do things like why wombats have square poop. <laughs> 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 okay, did not know that. <laughs> yeah, wombats have square poop. <laughs> okay. Uh, they're the only animal that does. But there's, and they have, in their transcripts, they have a ton of, like, citations if you want to go in and, you know, because they do some more controversial topics. And if you want to go in and check out, like, everything is backed up and you can trust it or verify everything that they've said, which is pretty cool. Hmm. And then, of course, got to plug the uh, podcast that brought us all together, which is The Walking Dead cast. <laughs> and if you have not watched the Here's Negan episode of The Walking Dead and you watch The Walking Dead at all, go and watch Here's Negan and then listen to Jason and Lucy talk about it on The Walking Dead cast. Yes. Yeah. I sent in some feedback in that, too. And I thought it was pretty cool. Oh, it was such a great episode. It was very different from the comic and how they portrayed Negan, but in a sense, it showed a lot more human character within it and showed a lot of feeling and heart with the character you know yeah whereas in the comic he's just another blowhard as he usually is in the comic (laughs) but in this one there was a lot of emotion and empathy i enjoyed it and i think jeffrey d morgan and hillary burton did a great job with their portrayal of uh, lucille and egan yeah that they were fantastic together well with mine uh the only one i have this week because i have to do several (laughs) This week, uh, this week's episode of Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum and his uh, Inside of You podcast. He has Sean Astin this week, who we all know Sean Astin from The Goonies. (laughs) Strange, strange indeed. uh, Stranger Things. I keep saying (laughs) strange indeed. (laughs) That's another podcast. (laughs) Exactly. It's another podcast. But they talk about mental health and the stigma behind people who have mental disorders and how Sean brings up his mother and and she was very famous and how the world look at people with mental disorders or disabilities. So it's a, a nice eye awakening episode and I highly recommend it. Yeah, we need we need to work on mental health and understanding mental health in this country. Yeah. A, a lot. Yeah, a lot of people treat it as like, oh, there's nothing wrong with them or they're just crazy. But No, that's not the case. And if a lot of people look within themselves, and I always say it, the the, (laughs) and you'll people will probably be mad at me for saying it, but I don't think there is any real version of a true sane person out there in this world right now in this day and age. So sanity is something that is an idealistic aspect where I think we're all just crazy in this yeah this soup of cold what a world or earth at this point <laughs> so we're all struggling to find out about ourselves and tripping over ourselves during it but that's just my thought so don't attack me on that please <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going to attack you now, i'm a firm believer in therapy for yeah, everyone very, everybody if, yeah if nothing else it's one hour a week or a month or however often you do it where you get to be completely selfish and it's fine or, or even <laughs> just self reflection you know yeah yeah, no, I, I'm a firm believer in therapy. The only thing I would recommend to our listeners would be, well, GalaxyCon is coming out on April 17th and 18th, and there's going to be a lot of people on there. I put in for a virtual one-on-one with Mr. John Bernthal himself, Punisher, Ooh. or Shane from The Walking Dead. Big fan of his. I uh, loved him in Baby Driver. And uh, I think there was a Tank movie. I forget the name. It was him, Matthew McConaughey, <gasps> and a whole bunch of other people. Or I could be wrong. Was it Fury or am I thinking of a different movie? It is Fury. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I forgot the name of it. But I only got to meet John at One Walker Stalker. And that was at the time when he just got named as being the Punisher. That was the Philly one, right? I think so. Yeah. Or it could have been Jersey we there before there. <laughs> I think it was Jersey before okay. that. Yeah. 
but I I got to meet him. Didn't get a picture with him or anything, but uh, I just wanted to get a chance to talk to him, mention how we covered, because on, honestly, listeners, the first podcast we did on this, and you'll hear a slew of people coming in, Pay coming in, Avelino coming in, Steve coming in. I started it off with rotating guests, <laughs> <laughs> and we first covered Punisher season one. And that's how we started this podcast off. So I wanted to get at least that video documentation of me saying, hey, thank you, because it wasn't for you. I wouldn't have started a podcast about these superhero kind of things and just thank him on that. I'm not they don't allow you to plug the podcast. So I'll just mention that I have a podcast that I did. And then I'm hoping probably within a week's following, I'll just reach out to his publicist and management and agent to see if he could come on for an interview. And we'll oh, go from there. Cool. But you know, I've tried this before and I've had, you know, it's hit or miss with certain people. So it's, yeah. you could try it. We'll see. In this uh, case, they great. say no and you're in the same spot you were at before. Exactly. <laughs> but it, you don't know unless you try. Exactly. Well, with that, to submit your feedback, well, you could go to our Facebook page and that would be facebook.com slash panels to pixels. And there you could see what we're covering per week. Every week I've been trying to put up at least a photograph of what we're covering and you just leave the comments down below that image. Obviously Falcon and Winter Soldier and Invincible. So I try to do a reminder a couple of days or the day before the episode releases. That way you guys could just put in your comments and thoughts. If we don't get to it that particular podcast, we will read or play those comments later on. You could also send us an email at panels to pixels one at gmail.com and that's panels to is spelled T O and the number one at gmail.com. Send out a regular email if you want and just like a comment as it were, or you could just record your own voice and submit that in the email as an attachment. We'll play it just like it did with Steve and we'll uh, give our thoughts and views on what you had to say. So you could also check us out on our website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. And that will redirect you right now for our Facebook page. But I'm hoping to expand on that hopefully come this summer. Well, where else can you find us? Well, obviously Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice. If there's a uh, any sort of feedback you could leave there, it'd be great. Rating would be ap appreciated as well. And... We also have a YouTube page, so you could just search for Panels to Pixels podcast and just subscribe to us there. Some people like to listen to us there, obviously. I think I saw that there was like at least a good like 10 or 12 viewers and they listen that way. So that's a perfect way to do that. If you like the content, just give us a thumbs up or subscribe if you like to do that. Subscribe, yay! Yeah. <laughs> So where else can listeners hear us? Well, I could be heard right here on Panels to Pixels podcast on the Next Level Network, as always. And you could also hear my other podcast, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. And there I cover action movies, adventure movies, suspense, and thriller movies. Up next will be a face-off between Ben and I. And then after that, I'll be covering Sinbad and Eye of the Tiger with my friend Jerry. So we're trying to go into that fantasy lore at this point, too, with the show. Nice. So hopefully somebody will pick out, like, Indiana Jones or something like that later on, <laughs> even though they're kind of obvious. If somebody says Alan Quartermain in The Lost City of Gold, I'll, I'll laugh, because <laughs> that is a good movie. It's interesting. I never heard of that movie, to be honest. <laughs> it's like an Indiana Jones knockoff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it has James Earl Jones in one of them, too. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So check those out if you want. Just follow me there on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and you could find us in any media player of choice. Uh, I don't have a YouTube channel on that, but you can check us out on Facebook.com slash Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. So you can check us out there. I always post. I actually post a lot of panels to pixel stuff there for when the new episodes because it seems I have more content here than I do there. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll see a lot, a lot of people like, wait a minute. And I guess I've attracted a lot more listeners due to that. So, but if you have any ideas of what you guys want me to cover there, just send it there and it'd be great. So Jamie, you've been asked a lot to be on podcasts within the past week after the podcast launch. So. Only one. Uh, only uh, Ben's the only one who officially asked me to join his Wilhelm podcast so That'll be we'll great. see if that pans out cool 
But this is your second opportunity. Obviously, you're going to be on for the remaining and what we do here. So that would be great. And get your feet wet. It's in podcasting and we have fun with it. And I always do appreciate your thoughts and your views on this particular subject. I'm having fun. Yeah, it's a fun thing. And I love including all my friends on doing this. So with that, I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. I'm Jamie. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.